Welcome back to the Rule Your Pool podcast, everyone. I'm your host, Eric Knight, and with me today is a special guest. Now, if you've ever been in our classes, we talk a lot about best known practices. We talk about bad habits. We've done several episodes in the past on six bad habits. And following in the vein of our proactive pool care philosophy that we have, we want our customers, the pool pros out there, to be getting better at what they do by tracking things. One of the main questions that we've had over the last eight years of having the Arenda Calculator as it continues to grow is, can I store my history? Can I store my chemical results from last week? Can I save accounts to this? And the answer has always been no. And the reason for that is we are not set up for that. We are not equipped. We are not really a software company. We're a chemical company. We're an education company, but not really a software company. And we realized that there are many companies in this industry that are software companies that are upping that game. And as I said in a previous episode, I think at the end of 2023, we are integrating with them. Instead of just telling you, sorry, we can't do that, we are integrating with softwares and we are advocating heavily that our customers use these softwares. You can pick which one you want, but we're going to interview each one. And this is the first one we're doing in a long time. This guy that we have today is the CEO of an app called Poolbrain. And Poolbrain came to us with an interesting request, and we're going to talk about it in this episode. So Adam Beach, welcome to the Rule Your Pool podcast. Thank you, Eric. Always a pleasure to talk to you. Yeah, thanks for being here. I know it's your first time here, but we have seen each other at a few trade shows. And we're going to get into this episode 139. And I've got a couple questions for you. And I know that you've had some customer feedback, and I'm already interested to see what that looks like because you're the second app to integrate this. And I think you're doing some very cool things with it. So without further ado, this is episode 139 of the Rule Your Pool podcast. Welcome to Rule Your Pool, the podcast by Arenda that explains and simplifies pool chemistry so that anybody, regardless of experience, can understand it. I'm your host, Eric Knight, bringing clarity to these subjects so that you can bring clarity to your water. If you're ready to rule your pool, then let's go. Okay, Adam, when you came to me with your idea for what you could do with our app, no one had ever asked for that before. You said, hey, we got a lot of customers that may or may not need to use this offline. Maybe they don't have a good sell signal. The idea of having to call our server, which is called an API, just wasn't really in the cards. And it forced us to think differently. So why don't you kind of talk about what your vision has been, what is Poolbrain, and what does it do for the customers? Yeah, just to speak really quickly about the offline thing, you know, when we first built Poolbrain, I built it for my own company. We had about 35 trucks on the road at the time, had some issues scaling and getting the technicians to consistently do quality services based on the unique needs for each body of water, just like every pool company in the nation deals with. And one of the first features I built in was the ability to have guided workflows and automatic dosing. But it was a very basic way to dose. It was just kind of for my company. It was uh, CPO formulas, just standard boy plate stuff. Um, no LSI was involved. It had uh, very fixed targets. You couldn't really just customize them on the fly per service level, for example. But it worked so well, even just above what we were doing, that I knew that we would eventually arrive at the place we're finally at now, where we integrate with the gold standard uh, calculator in the industry, which has become a rend over the years, to do that in a much more, I'd say, complex and intelligent way, and in a lot more customizable as well. And I still think we're just getting started. But the whole point of of not having a sell signal, that's one of our core, core values. <laughs> we just don't give that up because we've been in the technician's shoes when they're out in the middle of a, a job and they literally can't even do their work because the app's just spinning, spinning, spinning right. and the loading bu- and The loading buffering, and loading. I don't know, on a MacBook, it's the, what do they call it? The beach ball of doom? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So to eliminate that, we made sure that we have everything working natively in the app. It makes it lightning fast and it makes it not signal dependent. And then when a cell phone signal is available, it'll automatically sync any information that's new to the phone and any information off the phone to the server. And that's just a much better experience and way to get consistent data, especially when it comes to something like a chemical calculator, which is a vital tool for water chemistry and and maintenance. I mean, you have to have it. Well, let me back up. You said something that I actually didn't realize. I know you came from the service business, but 35 trucks on the road. How many pools was your company servicing? (laughs) <laughs> At the time, it was about a thousand. My um, word! Then, what market? And then once where are you located? Uh, Phoenix, Arizona. Oh, Phoenix. That's a lot of pools, man. So you actually have 
frontline experience of what your customers go through on a day-to-day basis? Oh, absolutely. I, I started in 2006 with just myself in a truck and, and a friend, and we started the business together. We bought a small route of about 40, 50 pools, and we lost most of them because <laughs> we didn't know what we were doing, obviously, right. uh, and then just built it up from the ground the hard way. Wow. So over those years, what were some of the things that you learned that led you to create a software? Because like you said, it's the hard way. Innovation is the byproduct of necessity, right? So what were the problems that you went through over those many years as you were trying to scale your business? How much time do you have? (laughs) Well, I mean, it is a podcast and people do listen to it on 1.5 speed. So hit me. (laughs) Perfect. So there's lots, but it mostly stems like when you really analyze it and distill it down to what is the core problem, it's that no pool service company without, you know, a platform like Poolbrain can actually control their product. And you think about that, well, what, what is your product? Your product is a person out in the field that's completely unsupervised, usually on, you know, little to no training because you just don't have the time because the industry, unfortunately, is very demanding and pools have to get taken care of every single day and they don't wait. You know, again, because every pool is different, it's very hard to train accurately on all the variables, which are in the thousands of different combinations for all the different equipment setups. Oh, sure. Different, yeah. Um, yeah, water chemistry types and all, all the different stuff, right? So how can you reasonably expect a consistent quality product that everything is getting done at the right times in the right orders every time. And you can't because, you know, even a computer has to be set up very specifically in a very complex way to to do that and to track that. And a human is just not the best tool for that job to remember all those variables. And I'm not even trying to say that technicians all do a bad job. There's technicians that do great jobs and still turn pools green just because of a lack of data. You're not going to remember what the PSI was across 22 visits for a single body of water when you take care of 80 bodies of water, you know, four point five times a month. And you're constantly seeing that PSI gauge and they all run at different pressures to be correct. Uh, But a computer can see that and it can see that trend and it can alert you when there's an issue with either flow or chemistry over any given time range. And you can set all that up customizable so that instead of the old standard of pool care, where basically a a pool company scales by just being able to put out fires better than the next company, you know, they're just constantly reacting better. So instead of putting out fires, we're just preventing them proactively and we're able to do that through technology. The idea is you dial in a body of water for exactly what it needs because every body of water is unique, whether it's what chemistry readings it needs, what targets it needs, how often it needs to be backwashed, you know, if there's a caretaker screen that needs to be checked every 16 weeks or something random, all that stuff can get autopiloted. And then no matter who shows up at the body of water, Pool Brain will tell them what to do uh, automatically and tell them when things were last done and when things are next due and have that all at a glance. And chemistry is a, a key component in that because it's very, very difficult to train on. And it's obviously critical for that water to not turn green or just be healthy. I know we've talked before and you came to me with these ideas of what you wanted to do with our calculator. I did not realize that you had built a business like that. That's hard to do. So kudos for that. This is the first time hearing of this. So it's given me kind of some different questions to ask you now that we're talking here, because (laughs) What you said really resonates with me. One of the topics that we talk about with companies in private trainings, the people who run the businesses, we don't really talk water chemistry with them very often. We talk more about standardizing pool chemistry. And I've done a few episodes on this. We have a few blogs as well. If you go onto the Arenda app, go to blog, type in the word standard, you'll see it. There's a podcast in there. I don't remember the episode number, but standardizing pool chemistry from a business perspective, is really important. Because if you have a 1,000 pools in Phoenix, you're right, 35 trucks. You got a lot of people out there that may be all doing their own thing. And yeah, a lot of them are going to be really good. But inevitably, even between just two people, there's going to be a difference in experience. You and your partner, when you started, one of you had more experience than the other in some areas, and the other probably had more experience in others. Is that a fair statement? Definitely a fair statement. Compound that. You add a third person, now it's six different relationships, not three. And so every time you have a comparison between more people as you add them to the organization, the importance of standardization really increases almost exponentially. It's a lot of communication channels, right? It reminds me of this book, this great book called The Checklist Manifesto. Have you ever read it? No. It's this surgeon named Atul Gawande. Dr. Atul Gawande, and he's one of the most renowned surgeons in the world. And he's talking about the importance of a simple checklist. 
And what he was doing was examples in a lot of different industries, including big construction projects. They all have checklists. Now, what they implemented in operating rooms around the world due to this initiative with the World Health Organization was we implemented a checklist and infection rates plummeted, complications plummeted because they were simply doing things like, do we have all the tools on the desk? Yes. Can somebody verify that they put the sterilized tools on the desk? Yes. Move on. And then they all check as everybody scrubbed up. Yes. Are all the lights on? Yes. Have we, you know, injected the anesthesia correctly? Yes. And it's simple things that they do every day, but you, you forget one step and somebody can get really hurt. And so they literally post a giant checklist with 12 items on it or something like that in the operating room in every hospital. And they have to follow that checklist. There's so many little variables that can go wrong if you miss the fundamentals. So if I'm a pool guy, yes, I know how to service a pool. Of course I do. But I can't track it. I can't be consistent on it because I don't remember everything that I did. I, I can establish what I'm doing in the here and now. But what good is that if I have no way of trending? Because if I can't trend the past, I can't forecast the future. Is that That's a good exactly paraphrase correct. of what you're talking about? That's precisely correct. If you have the data on the past and you see the entire picture, <clears throat> you can more accurately predict the future and you can do it automatically. And we found we can do it with high accuracy in many cases. And you also think about it like you were talking about, obviously, medical, like hospital. Right. Uh, people having to use checklists because things were getting, balls were getting dropped. Well, these are some of the most trained people in the world because the price of failure is so high. They're doctorates and, you know, very, very well trained. And they still need this type of system to make sure everything's done correctly because humans are fallible. It's just unfortunately the way it is. Um, and there's too many variables. We're just not the right tools for the job to see the entire picture. And, and that's the same with the pool industry is that everyone in a big company especially <clears throat> has a tiny piece of a large puzzle. And only a computer, a system designed to get the data in clean and consistently, which you need guided workflows to do, which we're the only software that has that right now to my knowledge, but you are going to need that to get the data in. And then once you have the data in, you can have a pool brain, take a look at everything and then see the whole picture and then present the right pieces to the right people for actions. Nice. And that really is the whole thing behind this. Technology has advanced to a point that it has made our lives a lot simpler almost to a fault. Like, I don't remember long division. I have a calculator for that. And I've lost some of the skills that I learned in school. But kids today, they're not even learning it. They're not even learning that nope. skill because they live in a world that you don't need that skill anymore. And it's a lost thing. What technology has become is an extension of what we can do. It's a force multiplier. It's like having a tractor. What did the tractor do for farming? You didn't need 12 horses anymore. The idea of using software in general is a good idea, but what you guys are doing is even more than that. You are almost directing and allowing a business manager, if I'm hearing you right, decide what the workflow should be for that unique company in that unique place so that That's a correct. company in Miami can do something different than a company in Michigan. Is that right? That's exactly correct. Or a company with a body of water in this place can do something different with a body of water in, the, in a different place, like the same company even. Nice. And that covers too, because it's not just the technician, right? Because the technician might know their route, but if they get sick and someone else has to cover the route, it just takes one mistake, one lack of knowledge on one valve or one backwash or anything like that to turn a pool green. And then once that pool's green, it's a runaway train that starts a chain reaction of terrible that every pool company's experienced. And then normally you just end up spinning your wheels in that, in that reaction, and you never really climb out of it to move forward again at a certain size and scale. Mm -hmm. And that's also why our best fit client is a medium to large size company. We're by no means only good for medium to large size companies, but we were, I think, one of the only platforms to be built for the needs of a large company from the ground up from day one. And so we, we have a bunch of things targeted targeted towards those needs, a smaller company sometimes sees it as too powerful or like, you know, too complex to set up and they don't get past that point because they haven't really experienced what you were talking about, which is the exponential growth challenge right. <laughs> where you add on more text and it's not like a linear thing. It is exponential. And at some point you just get bogged down. Right. It, it's even, a difference between growing and scaling. Mm -hmm. And yeah. we did this at Arenda prior to the acquisition. We were growing for many years, and then we got to a point where we had to start scaling. And that's a totally different thing in business, and you've experienced it too. Growth is fun. 
Scaling sucks. <laughs> I and mean, we're not talking <laughs> about scaling accurate. with calcium in your pool, by the way. We're talking about business, like scaling <laughs> up. There's another great book called Scaling Up by Vern Harnish. You ought to read it. Basically, the dividing line is in a growth phase of your company, you delegate things you're not good at. In a scaling phase, you have to start delegating things you love doing. And that's the painful part. You have to start delegating things you are good at. And I don't know where that is for every company. I would say in the pool business, that's probably around 300 pools, I would guess. What, what do you think, Adam, since you've gone through it? I almost always use that as a, as a marker, or I say about eight technicians and at least one full-time office staff. Like once you get out of the stage where it's like you, your brother and a couple friends, yeah. <laughs> it starts getting challenging, but you can still grow. I mean, I, I grew it to about 30 uh, trucks before I really couldn't grow it any further. And it was like, you know, just kind of waffling for a few years after that. But it got exponentially slower after around like the 350, 400 pool mark, maybe, maybe eight to 10 technicians is where it's like a noticeable uh, wall. Well, yeah. so let's expand on that. At what point did you realize you have to stop cleaning pools yourself and start working on the business instead of working in the business? I probably didn't get out of the field until I had around five technicians, maybe. So you know, about, I don't know, maybe 300, 400 pools. So talk to me about how Pool Brain addresses those pains that you went through. Because there's people who listen to this podcast that are at that scale or they're at that stage in their business or approaching it fast that may need to hear what you have to say since you've walked that path. Yeah, there's a few things, but it all comes down uh, in the, at the end to the technician, right? And it's so hard to find good technicians. It's so hard to train technicians to do a good job. It's so hard to cover them when they're sick or they just quit without notice. And then it's so hard to clean up the mistakes that or the fallout that all of that causes. Because when a technician just quits without notice, well, that's you know 80 pools that week that aren't going to get cleaned and balanced if you can't find a replacement right now. And as you know, if a, it's in the summer in Phoenix, especially if you go a week without cleaning those those pools, every single one of them will be green with no exceptions. So you will lose 80 pools. You'll get 80 bad reviews. You'll have to spend thousands of dollars trying to turn those pools around or getting sued for it. It's a nightmare. So even just some, something as simple as someone quitting without notice, uh, put your whole company on the back foot. And when you're on the back foot, you can't move forward. You're just trying to survive. What the software did is first we focused on how can we get technicians trained faster? Like how can we just hire a new person? Because there was no shortage back then of people that were willing to show up and try and clean a pool. It's just a shortage of people that were good at it or would last through training, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So we could probably get someone pretty quickly throw them in the field, but then, you know, we have to dedicate someone training and that slows them down. So we'd get less pools done and they may or may not stick around. So the idea was if we can get some guided workflows and get all of the training information for each body of water and what needed to happen in what order in the system, then we could just train someone real quickly and then tell them, Hey, just do what the app says. And then you'll be good. You'll be at least mostly good. You won't turn the pools green and that'll get you far enough down the road to get some more experience and we can keep the training rolling. Right. And that worked pretty well. But it wasn't the end game. <clears throat> so then we realized that if we could put uh, automatic dosing in the system and just completely eliminate the chemical training or at least take it way, way, way down, that was the majority of the training. You know, we were training people three, four weeks in many cases. And chemical training, you can cut that in half at least. Chemicals, as you know, you may or may not know this, Eric, but it's complicated. What? Uh, <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and so if you don't have to train someone on chemicals, you've taken most of the complexity out. It's a lot easier to say, hey, here's how you turn valves. Here's how you hook up a vacuum. Here's how you net a pool um, versus here. This is muriatic acid. This is dichlor. This is liquid chlorine. And here are these doses. And these are the equations. It's yeah, just and a, never it's mix nightmare. this with that and never mix that with that. And the, you mean yeah, there's a lot of variables in pool care? You don't say. There are are a lot of variables, it turns out. But the nice thing is there are calculators for that. And if there's a calculator for it, it's just math. And if it's just math, why are we teaching them to do the long division? Like to your point, you're talking about how they're not even learning that in schools anymore. And I don't disagree with that. I don't think it's a, a valuable skill. If you have a calculator, um, they can probably be learning other things. They just need to know how to get the right input into the calculator so the calculator can give them the output. And that's exactly what we focus on here. We just need to make sure they're doing the right input. And that is through the series of very specifically controlled workflows that you can set as a company per body of water to, to make that happen. And they can't skip it, forget it, or cheat it. And I could go into all those details, but probably not worth boring you with that, but they can't do it. So you do get the right input. 
and then it's going to give you automatically the right output, and so you don't have to train, and you eliminate mistakes. Well, you still have to you train, but you train a lot less, it sounds like. You're training them yeah. on a system instead of the Wild West. Yeah, and what I mean by not have to train is is you, you have to train them on identification of the chemicals, like this is what this chemical is, and you have to train them on, like, don't mix this with that, or here's how you put it in the pool. But you don't have to say anything to do with the chemical equation. Like, you don't have to say this is the math you need to do to put this amount of liquid chlorine in the pool. You don't need to know the gallons. It's already saved. And if it's not saved, there's a built-in gallons calculator in pool brain where you can do it right on the spot. It saves it. You never have to do it again. It auto-doses from there. You don't have to train on that stuff. If you're not doing LSI, if you're doing LSI, obviously there's still some training involved, but if you're doing just like straight dosing, which is what we were doing back in the day, and I will fully say that LSI is a superior way. And I learned about that in, I want to say 2008. And it was, uh, I don't think it was from Harold Evans, but it was, I, I remember taking a class with Harold Evans on phosphates back in 2008. Wow. Uh, and he was, he was trying to like convince the world that it was a thing we should care about. And obviously we should care about it. And I remember pool guys at the time grumbling about, oh, uh, we've had, you know, we didn't deal with phosphates for the last 20 years. I'm pretty sure we'll get by on the next 20. And of course, here we are. And then Flint, Michigan happened in 2014. And now it's EPA mandated to have anti-corrosion measures, which is almost always some form of phosphate mm -hmm. in our drinking water. Yep. Exactly. And so, so anyway, so at that same um, convention, I also learned about LSI and I don't remember if it was from him or not, but someone taught me about LSI and, and way back then I was like, Hey, that's so much better. We're definitely going to use it. And then I tried to teach it to my techs uh, yeah. <laughs> and they just wouldn't do it. And then they would quit. And then the next person would not get trained. It was just, they just weren't. Well, doing Adam, it. And that so was with the, reference yeah. charts. Imagine trying to teach them <clears> the actual math. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, so let's, exactly. let's, uh, let's dive into that and then we'll wrap this up because this was a great picture of, of what you do and why you're doing it. I think this is great. You came to me and you said, Hey, we want to use your calculator and integrate it to help a typical pool pro out there implement LSI on every single visit. So what was your vision and what do you want to do with what we've built, which our listeners are already familiar with? How are you making that better? Basically, the vision we had is just making the most seamless and automated user experience possible. One of our core missions is if it can be automated, it must be automated. Our vision for the extreme future is that eventually no training will be required at all on chemistry. We can get into that in a second. Um, but we wanted to take that first major step, or maybe it's like the second or third step at this point. But we, it was the next step in the progression towards that end game. And we wanted to integrate with Arenda because, number one, it's an amazing calculator. It's become the gold standard of the industry for very good reason. Um, but also there's a lot of people requesting Arenda specifically. So we knew it was going to be a hit with our customers. So when we integrated it, we basically looked at like, what is the experience currently? You've got PoolBrain, you've got Arenda. And what are people doing now? They'd have to go into PoolBrain, go through our workflows, enter the readings. Then they have to switch apps yeah. and then they have to go and put the gallons in Arenda. Then they have to put their readings in again in Arenda. Then they have to switch back and they have to, you oh, know, they, they know have to put in the chemicals. You're not the only and one so who heard those complaints. <laughs> yeah, so it's not the best user experience. Um, but we also, as we've been discussing this whole time, have very unique ways of doing things. We don't just like have a screen that you just do whatever you want in any order you want. So we had to make sure we built this in a really well thought through way that works with our existing workflows. So the way it works in our app is you can control at the company level what chemical readings are required and how often based on the service level assigned to that body of water. So you might say like, I want this body of water to have a chlorine reading and alkalinity reading and a pH reading every single visit and a cyanuric acid reading every four visits and a phosphate reading every 10 visits or literally anything you want. Or maybe you say, I want a whole LSI panel done every visit and you have water temperature, calcium and the whole nine every visit. You set it and forget it. And then when the technician gets to that screen, it's going to force them to put in the right readings for that body of water at the right frequency, no matter what experience they have. So that's step one. Step two is they're going to go to the next screen. And at some point, they can do their chemicals. And when they tap on the chemicals, it's going to open up a screen that's going to show them the LSI currently, the LSI that's predicted. And of course, Arenda is doing all these calculations and it's got the same color code and you know, visual UI that Arenda has. Uh, and then underneath it, it's got a bunch of fields for chemicals. And the chemicals they should be putting in the, that body of water for that day are already filled in. 
Nice. So it doesn't just tell them what to put in. It already fills in the fields for them. So there's literally zero data entry required at all for these chemicals. Of course, it can be edited. If the technician knows something that we don't for that day, maybe there's algae in the pool. They can set defaults for what's going to happen. They can set permissions on what the technician's allowed to do. And we do that throughout the entire platform, whether it's a technician or an office user or anything. We're all about visibility and company-wide control from a central command and also permission limiting because obviously some people should or shouldn't be doing X, Y, or Z based on if they're new right. or if, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So when they get to these fields and they can edit them, that's one option. But the other option is they can tap recalculate. And there's a, a calculator icon, the Arenda icons there. They can tap it and then it brings up the Arenda calculator and it works just the same way. You can change all the dials, swipe left and right. It changes the colors of all your stuff with the same color codes. Um, and you can see your new predicted LSI and dial it in. And then once you have something you like, you can hit calculate, or yeah, I think it's a calculate button, but basically the button that says submit or calculate. And then it goes back to the original screen and overwrites those values with the newly calculated values. And it's cool too, because you can set defaults at the company level for what chlorine you want to use. Like some companies only use dichlor, some companies only use liquid, etc. So you say, what chlorine am I using to raise the chlorine level? What acid am I using to lower pH or alkalinity? And speaking of that, we do some other automations like, you know, in Arenda, for example, when you have a dose of acid to lower both alkalinity and pH in the same outcome, right. your Arenda will recommend use the alkalinity. But that's another training point that you have to train the technician like, hey, in this scenario, make sure you're doing this and you have to trust them to do it. And you have to trust them to enter it correctly. We take all that guesswork out and we just automatically give them the alkalinity based dose in that specific scenario. So there's no training involved at all. And it's always correct. Well, anytime you uh, th release a new like piece of software, there's going to be a learning curve to it for the customers. And you're going to get a lot of feedback. I know we've already been getting feedback with your integration since you released it a few months ago. I do want to say this. What Poolbrain and these other partners that we're bringing on are doing for you, listeners, is not easy. This is months of work. This is a massive financial commitment that they are making to you to integrate our calculator into their app. And I hope what our calculator brings is more than that in return. Because they could try to build their own. They're choosing to build something that you're already familiar with so that you get the same results whether you're using the Arenda app or theirs you're getting the same very precise chemical dosing. That's why they wanted to integrate. It is not just something, oh, we wanted to do it because it's cool. No, no, no. This is a big business pivot. They're making that decision consciously to give you the best results possible. And I want to thank you for that, Adam. This took you like five or six months and a lot of calls and a lot of coordination. And it's like that with everybody. Everyone's committed to doing this. It's a big change for your business, and we appreciate that. We appreciate you as well. It's definitely a great partnership. I think it's a no-brainer. I mean, it definitely benefits us as well as the customers. So we're super happy with it. And this is still just step, like I said, two or three on a, on a six or seven step process to an end game, which is going to be really cool for the industry. Well, we look forward to seeing what that does as it progresses. You're going to get feedback from customers and, and your system is going to continue to optimize as you learn what the users like, what they dislike. So I'm very happy with it. Thank you so much for being on here. Is there anything else you'd like to tell the audience? I don't think so. I appreciate your time. All right. Well, thank you for helping us hopefully get to about 300 listeners. That would be great. <laughs> this has been episode 139 of the Rule Your Pool podcast with Adam Beach, the CEO and founder of Pool Brain. We will have a few more interviews because, again, we are integrating with all the softwares because we want you to have the ability to make your own choices. But we really, really, really like best known practices so that you can track what you're doing and you will get better from it. We're just not cut out to do it ourselves. So why not let the people who are really good at it do that? And uh, Adam, thank you so much for your time. Take care, everyone. Thank you for listening to Rule Your Pool, a podcast by Arenda Technologies. For more information on what we discussed in this week's episode, check the links in the description or visit www.arendatech.com. I hope you find this show valuable enough that you tap that subscribe button and share it with your friends. You can also like us on Facebook and social media. And with our help, you'll be able to rule your pool without over-treating it with chemicals and wasting money. I'll see you next episode.